Welcome to the only place where real, raw, and vulnerable conversations happen with IFBB Bikini Pros to give you an inside look at their struggles, strategies, mindset, passions, and all of life beyond the stage. This podcast is made to inspire, motivate, and remind competitors and the average gym goer that even the most extreme lifestyles and elite athletes have their ups and downs. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm your host, Celeste Rains Turk, and now it's time for the Confessions of a Bikini Pro podcast. All right, you guys are familiar with this guest. Ingrid Romero has been on the podcast a few times now, and I'm very excited to include her in this presentation series. She's going to be talking to us about all things either Ingrid Romero bikinis and pose like a pro posing coaching. She's my personal posing coach, and I have been working with her since the beginning. Even my first show when she wasn't my coach, her and Joe were my coach. Like I saved all her Instagram videos, and (laughs) I swear, you guys, like this, she's the best and I'm blessed to wear her suits as well. And I'm just excited to bring her on and share this side of her with you. And if you want to learn more about Ingrid, listen to our last episode because <laughs> it's made people cry. So <laughs> it'll touch did, it, it. did it really make people cry? Yeah. Yeah. I got some <gasps> messages saying people were crying. Yeah. They, they loved it. And some, oh. and people were like, dang, you guys are like, so we just chatted and it was like, they thought they were listening in on our conversation. <laughs> So it's about to happen again because we pretty much like go with the flow and we don't really have much planned, especially because like I told you last time, Celeste, um, we live and breathe this sport every single day. So when you do this every day, you don't really need to prepare. It's all within you. And we're just going to pour it all out for you guys to help you in your journey and give you that motivation that you need to keep kicking bad. Yes, absolutely. So I'm going to ask you a lot about posing to start with, but I wanted to hear like, what is one thing you would hope customers think when they receive and finally hold their new suit in their hands or their rental suit in their hands? Can you repeat again? Yeah. What is one thing you would hope your customers think or feel when they receive it? Got it. Got it. So we're talking about suits first. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, only I was... this question. Only oh, okay. this question. I know okay. I threw you off a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh, are we not speaking about posting? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? They, I want them to feel it becomes reality while it's happening. Mm-hmm. Like all those feelings, like it's happening. It's reality. I made it. Because when they get a suit, it's kind of towards the end of their prep, or at least when I make suits, they're custom made and they're made one by one. So they don't, they're not made cheap and, you know, quick ships. They're made to their size. So then they finally get that. And it's like, well, I made it. I did everything I could. I prepped for whatever it is, 16, 18, 24 weeks or longer. And this is the last piece to complete that package and it becomes real. And when they put it for the first time, I love when they put it for the first time and they've already done a posing class with me before because now they actually see their final package on stage. And many times as of lately, in the last class, I have them come with the makeup and hair ready, not like stage makeup, but kind of similar. Mm -hmm. So we can see the final package and see uh, what hair will look better, what makeup will look better, what's complementing, you know, with their skin tone. Like, is, is this suit color good enough? Sometimes, believe it or not, we make last minute changes too. And because I rent suits, I'm actually even able to get them back because I know I can rent them and then sell another one. So I've done that as of lately too. I love because it. Because a client has put a suit on and I'm like, I'm sure. I'm unsure. Because it, it just, every skin tone is different. Um, everybody's different and it just looks different in everybody. Like imagine, let me just put an example when girls don't have implants, Mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of girls in the bikini world that don't have implants. There's a lot that do. I'm talking about breast implants. So I feel like a lot of bikini makers will make the top really small for those girls. In my opinion, making it a little bigger. And so you wear like a medium cap, actually. Yes. Uh, Making it a little bigger. It makes them feel like they have more, more volume. They may don't get the cleavage, but they do get the volume that balance with their glutes. So sometimes they kind of have to see it on to know that, you know, this size, I think is too small for her. Even though it fits her breasts, it doesn't give those illusions of those, the roundness that I'm looking for, for the stage. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it can be, it can be very, very tricky. And I make last minute decisions as well. And I know with you, Celeste, we are probably going to go, I'm not going to say the color. <laughs> 
I can't reveal it because it's probably going to keep it a secret, but I know there's a couple of colors in mine. Uh, yeah. One you've already done before. Actually, both kind of you're done before, but yeah. um, they're going to be a little different this time. I'm very and, excited. Um, yeah, I'm super excited. But anyway, going back to the question, because I'm rumbling, it was a little slow start for me. Sorry, guys. It's been a long day and I actually did four classes today already. Wow. <laughs> so I'm a little bit drained on energy. But what I want them to feel is like, wow, I did it. Um, it's time, it's time to shine, you know, in, Mm -hmm. and what I want to touch is that when we go to bikini posing, something that actually I was talking to one of my clients today, um, she only booked one class, just one. Mm -hmm. So usually they will do like a package of a minimum of two, sometimes more. Right. Yeah. And she just booked one class. She's an experienced competitor. She's competed many times. But she's realized how much she had to still improve after just one class. And I was pushing her super class. So, so, so super, like a lot. I was pushing Mm -hmm. her hard because I know she's done this before. And it baffles my mind that people prep for so long. Some people prep for six months Mm -hmm. and then they just do one class. (laughs) <laughs> or, or, or not only that, let's, let's not talk about just one class because some people can really get that routine down in one class. Which I, I don't think so, but there's some people that could. But you need to practice. If you do that and you practice every day, then it may work. But what I'm hearing lately is that they're just practicing like once a week. So how mm-hmm. do you prep for like, let's say 24 weeks and only practice posing once a week? Yeah, 24 just, sessions it, it's just it make yeah sense. and then just one posing class like it's just crazy to me that people will put so much into a prep and only practice posing once I don't think I think they're still not realizing how important posing is a lot of people yeah you know? I agree I think if you look at if you look at every single competitor who qualified for the Olympia last year and then you look at the top 10 even at the Arnold right like every competitor in the Arnold honestly I think what set a lot of them apart was their posing like mm-hmm. the girls with really just beautiful poise, like n- not a lot of rough spots or, you know, um, uncomfortableness. It just looks very in flow and very much to their personality. Like they did really well. Your top five Olympia isn't going to be posing like a robot. Like they're going to look like they've been doing this every day because they have been, um, yeah. you know, well, like- <laughs> they understand how important illusions mm-hmm. are to our body. Like they, it's absolutely insane to me that people don't take this seriously because that's what you're doing. You're performing. They don't see all the gym sessions that you did. They see that moment. And the fact that people don't take it seriously, is kind of insane. But um, what I want to say is that if you have a really good uh, posing routine and you have a competitor, maybe with a, you know, a little bit lesser physique than yours, you can totally outpose her if you have a more powerful routine. Mm -hmm. So let's say, sorry, I'm did it said a little wrong. If you have somebody in comparisons next to you that is super powerful, has an amazing physique, but she's not able to show it, you may beat her. And I see this happening so many times. So the fact that you can beat somebody that is superior than yours, because maybe she has got more density on her muscles, she's just been doing this longer. The fact that you can actually beat her because you know how to pose better. I mean, if that doesn't give you the motivation to practice, <laughs> you know, because you cannot control the girl next to you, but you can control yourself. So absolutely. Yes. yes practice until your feet hurt every day. I would say at <laughs> least, at least I'm exaggerating, but I always tell the girls at least 20, 30 minutes a day after your, um, your workout or before if your legs get too shaky, like if it's leg day, it's really hard to practice <laughs> afterwards, but even like 10 minute thing, just move. <laughs> yes. And, you know, like we can't control who's competing next to us, but we can control how we battle with them. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, so yeah. And again, also on the other side, you can have an amazing physique and be like, wow, just like a pro. And then, but if you can pose in a way that is like flawless elegant classy with flow then the judges don't really get engaged with you you Mm -hmm. know and then they most likely will mark you down or they just won't see those proportions the symmetry the balance they just won't see it because you're not showing it to them you know and I can break down a little bit of the poses um it's hard because we don't have pictures right to show you guys just (laughs) listening to this but I'll try my best to um to kind of explain what I'm talking about 
um, in each post, but you can, you can talk Celeste. I know I talked no, so long. No, no, no. That was good. <laughs> I liked where you were going with that. It was like perfect flow into this, this topic of posing and making sure people are taking it seriously. And let's address each pose for bikini. I mean, we do have wellness and figure girls who listen. And uh, of course we, you know, I know you do that as well, but let's focus on bikini. You've got okay. your front, you got that booty pop, you got your back. Yeah. Pose. So when you're obviously having proportions is important. You even talked about that with the bikini itself, but in a front pose, what do you think is the most important thing? Or maybe what are some tricks that people can use? So, you know, what's the most important things is knowing that front poses keep changing and, and evolving. So really staying me because I go to the shows and I watch the girls, I'm always really catching new trends or new things that somebody may do that don't even realize that looks really good. I kind of catch it. So I'm always really open to learn new things, new angles or new, new even from the way you, you, you put your fingers, your hands, you know, mm -hmm. so like being very open and not being so stuck or is this way and this way only. And that happens a lot with coaches, right? With coaching coaches is this way and this way only. Well, it is not. Right. It is different for everybody. So paying attention and, and the girls that are competing right now that are very competitive, headed to nationals, or because if they're nationals, they're there for a reason, they've done well in their amateur shows. So really putting attention in how they do their poses and kind of try to mimic a little bit what they do. And then of course, hiring a posing coach that can help you uh, make sure that understand if that works for you or not. Because a lot of the times the girls don't realize if that post is working for them or not, because they really don't know what the judges are looking for. Um, I know what the judges are looking for because I've been sitting behind their panel for 10 freaking years. <laughs> and, and I've seen body after body after body for so many years that I know exactly what they're looking for, but not everybody can see it and catch it, you know? So yeah. um, that you gotta consider like, how much muscle this girl has. Maybe I'm trying to hide a little bit her upper body if it's you know, not proportionate with her lower body or the opposite. Sometimes they have really big quads and I have to make sure they look a little bit more elongated. So we play with their feet positioning in those front poses. We play with the way we square the shoulders to the front. We, we just wanna make sure they're proportionate. So if it's not balancing the physique, there's ways of highlighting. Uh, Tamer always, um, CEO and Marcel Contes, he always say, posing is highlighting your strengths and like hiding your weakness yes. or your flaws, right? <laughs> he always said that in every, and it's the truth because absolutely nobody is perfect. Even the girl that is killing the game right now, whoever it is, I mean, in the pro level or in the amateur level, whatever level, she's still not perfect, okay? Mm -hmm. No one is. So there, she's just doing the right things to keep improving her physique, their physique and their posing. So that's it for the front pose. I will say, um, there's, there's also like three different front poses that you can do and not every pose works for everybody. So not because a pose works for you, as it works for somebody, it's going to work for you. So that's also very important to know. And because most of you won't know, then you have to hire somebody. And I'm not saying to hire me. I'm just saying like an, another person, another posing coach, another, another set of eyes. And, um, that's it for the front post. It's really hard to actually teach it on a podcast. I'm just realizing as we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was so insightful. Like I, some of the main takeaways I got from that is it's not always going to look good on you, but it's important to watch what other people are doing who are successful because you'll learn things from that. Um, specifically, whether that's proportions or hiding a weakness, emphasizing a strength, showcasing your physique in a way that's going to beat or highlight, you know, you against the girl next to you. Um, Are you making notes? Because you're like saying all the things I said. It's funny. Did I you... actually didn't. I do have notes, but I didn't even write them down. I'm practicing. Oh, look at that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> practicing my summary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think, you know, those are some really important things that maybe don't always get considered. And I like how you said, like, you're behind the judging panel. You're seeing this. And there's probably yeah. things too that like what I've seen is like, okay, someone's trying so hard to do what someone else is doing that they're taking away from something that could look better. So they may look really mm. good on stage, but there's always a next level, which you've shown to me, like, I'll think, wow, I got this down. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, Ingrid has like all these tricks in her back pocket and we're going to start using them. Or I messed up in this one thing, or I reverted to an old habit. And I think, yeah. you know, that's, 
good thing to be yeah, aware of. Because also sometimes posing evolves for people. So when you have a competitor that is in the beginning stages, sometimes you want to just keep it simple. Even if this competitor can probably do a little bit more, sometimes it's just better to play it safe and do something that they're really confident on and they can pull off and you know it's going to work. Because at the end of the day, the judges don't really care that much of how elaborated your routine and how many hair flips and back steps you'd really do. <laughs> You know, so, so I do because I am Spanish flamboyant and I love movement and flow and dance. I kind of love those elaborated routines, but I always really try to think as a judge, you know, uh, I need to understand what they actually want to see in these girls' physiques. And, and if I do too much, it may hurt them. It's not going to benefit them. So why risk it? Right. Yeah. So that's also very important. Some people can really pull it off from the beginning. Some people need to start a little slower and build from there. And I had, I, I don't know if you remember uh, this client, uh, her name was Alisa. She turned pro really quick with us. Um, she, I remember when she won the overall in Miami nationals and she had one front post and she went straight to that glute pop from there, just one. Mm -hmm. And then one back post and came back and by, and she won, you know what I mean? So that's to yes. tell you that sometimes it's just better to keep it simple. If you feel that it's just, it's just going to affect your confidence level. Cause you know how important that is. You talk a lot about that confidence, right? Mm -hmm. And another thing that is huge to me, and you know, this is the transitions. Yes. How to make them blend in a way that they're not blending too much, which all becomes like one thing, right? Because sometimes they go just flowing through this thing and you don't even know if she hit a front pose or not. I don't know. It just right. happened, you know? Yep. But so knowing how to blend those transitions, but still hold the poses long enough for the judges to catch it right? Mm -hmm. So transitions are super important. Um, and this is for everybody listening is how to go from one post to another. Um, especially when you are in that glute pop pose, this is the name I call it. I don't know how you guys call it. Okay. I, I say I glute pop pose, best. but I think everybody can kind of realize, right? That's kind of when you're kind of going to the back, that is the hardest transition when you're going from the back to the, well, to the glute pop, to the glute pop, Sorry, from the blue pose to the back <laughs> pose. I'm like so confused right now. But in that type of, in that transition, the judges are really keeping their eyes open and they're really, really seeing, okay, is she conditioned enough? Are her glutes going to jiggle in that step? If she steps too hard, her glutes are going to move. Are her glutes high enough? Sometimes they really dip in, in, that, in at that time. Um, are the glue hamstring tie-ins kind of, you know, coming through? Are the shoulder cups, like when they're reaching the back pose, showing to create that beautiful B taper mm -hmm. from the back? Like they're just looking at so much stuff. A lot of girls say it's just a, a booty contest. It's all about the glutes and hams. Well, it's really not because if you don't have those shoulder cups coming out, like usually the girls will have the hair back, right? And then mm -hmm. you see these beautiful round shoulders coming through the hair um, on the sides. And they really look at that. In a yes. matter of fact, there's judges. I remember Sandy saying, if you go forward too much and you kind of push too much, I'm not even talking about bending, just kind right. of going forward too much. You already lose so much size on your upper body that you're so worried about popping those hamstrings out and them coming that you're bending forward. Now we're losing all your upper body. There's no symmetry right here. You're not balanced. Your glutes are way bigger than your upper body. Your lower body is taking over. You're not placing Wow. Just because of a pose, just because I bend it forward a little bit. So that's how important, um, you know, that back pose done right is and how important the transitions are. So you actually make it into the first color, right? Yeah. Because usually the judges will see first that full routine. And if you don't make it in that full routine, if, if they're not really interested, you think they're not going to call you for comparisons. Right. So, yeah. So anyways, we kind of went from transitions to back pose, but that was, beautiful. <laughs> that was a great transition. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and you guys just remember, if you get to take something from this class, as tired as I am, <laughs> it is keep that core nice and tight girls. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, because yeah. that is the one thing that girls forget all the time. They're just really focusing in all the movement and what they have to do next that they forget about engaging their core and they breathe super heavy and then they just look, lose all the conditioning in their core. And yeah. again, if the judges look at you at that moment where you're breathing out and your core is totally not engaged, then it's done. 
So I always recommend walk with your car tight. I still keep my core tight. I don't know if you do this, LS, but when I take a picture, I, I keep my core tight even when I'm covered. Did yeah. you do that? Okay, oh my like God. my okay. core is tight and my <laughs> fingers are in my stage position. Like everything is staged. I'm like, what am yeah. I anymore? I don't even know how to pose for a picture if it's not a bikini pose anymore. Right? It's just like, oh my God, what am I doing? And then, okay, so like this is weird, but sometimes I will notice like if I'm in my back pose, if I breathe out in my back pose, when I'm really lean, like it makes me look different than when I'm thicker. Like now I'm thicker and I, I breathe out. It almost makes my waist look tighter, but I know mm. that when I'm leaner, yes. it doesn't, you know? Yes, yes, yes. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and I think everybody else can relate. <laughs> yeah. And I want to go back to what you said about keeping your core tight and not breathing so heavy. And I notice, and I think people could try this even while they're listening, but like when you're breathing out, like, and in, let's say you breathe out and you're like, just really hard, like your body almost falls forward, right? Like your shoulders start mm. rounding. It's yes. like, you don't want that on stage. You mm-hmm. want those shoulders up and back. So you mm-hmm. got to breathe in that chest. And, you know, when we're meditating, we're told breathe in your belly. And when you're doing your vacuums, you're, you're bringing into your belly and pushing it all out and then tightening, you know, that's all important. But when you're on stage, you got to be sure that you have that endurance to breathe through your chest. So do you have any recommendations for girls to work on that? So I, um, it's really hard for girls to learn how to vacuum and they really get really frustrated when I try to teach them how. So it's definitely not for everybody. So what I tell is to just really stand nice and tall, be very poised, keeping the core really nice and tight and just focusing on on keeping the core tight more than trying to vacuum in and coming up, you know, because what's happening when I tell them that they lose their glute in the front pose Mm -hmm. because they get so Mm -hmm. focused in how to pull up and like vacuum that their glutes go in. They're not able to stick the glute out if it makes sense at the same time. And I've gone through this with so many girls that I, this point, I felt that it was hurting them more than benefiting them. Me telling them they needed to learn how to vacuum. So Mm -hmm. I, I don't really, I'm not really, of course, if you can do it, just you go girl. Like it's amazing that you can do it, but not everybody can. And I don't want to bring more stress. And I know that when they actually stand nice and tall and they keep the core tight and they're still focusing, keeping those round glutes full towards the judges, I, that, that's more important to me than just doing a perfect vacuum, you know? Because yeah. it really, it does, they do lose. And, and I don't know how, to, I may do a post about this, Celeste, it's coming, yeah, you know, like the post I did with Carly, like sometimes when girls actually pull up too high and they try to, from their chest and they try to vacuum, how much it affects their glutes when they're not present in all other areas of their body at the and same time. And it looks sort of, I think to some little, people. It could look a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It could they're be, like, it, it, yeah. It works like, for some people, not for everybody. Yes. Yeah. And it, it, it's hard for them to actually do it um, very smooth. So right. you can, they kind of, kind of get into the position and then it, you can tell what they're doing. Um, again, there's some pros at this that do it amazing, but I personally myself don't vacuum and I've never had a problem with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to try to learn how to vacuum, start early in your prep and see if you can get it down, but just, just focusing on, on being present with your body and not letting the adrenaline take off. Well, the adrenaline is going to happen, right? And the nerves mm-hmm. are going to come, but really trying to stay as present as possible, because if not, you're not aware of what your body's doing. Yeah. So even sometimes even practicing a lot, you really want to practice a lot because you want your body to naturally respond to all the extra factors as being really nervous and stuff like that. So but, true. Yeah. But sometimes even practicing that much, the nerves get in the way and you completely lost control of what your body's doing. So you really have to be present and really try to think, who cares? That's what you got to think. <laughs> Look at those judges. Who cares? They don't know me. Ah, they don't know me. <laughs> like, really? I, I killed my prep. I made my family proud. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> who cares? <laughs> they don't be right. But I know it's easier said than done because yeah. I almost felt that I was going to poop my pants myself when I competed <laughs> every single time. So, so anyway, but just girls, you had to do what works for your physique. 
you got to get a coach that really understands what the judges are looking for. And a coach that actually can make you feel confident, even when you are not show ready. A coach that is able to see your body, like what is headed and is able to pose with you early on in the journey. So you can practice soon, you know, and not wait until the very end until some lines come out because some, some coaches say that I'm not trashing anybody, please. I'm really not that person, but some, I, I know because the feedback I get with the girls, they're like, Oh no, my coaches won't post until like they can see where my body's headed. Okay. We can change things when we know where your body's headed, but it's probably good that we get a little base now just a little base, you know, and if you actually been doing this for a long time, you can, you can see, you can see where the body's heading, you know, even if it's more like covered. Yeah. But, but like yeah, you and I Joe think, know like what, I'm, yeah. like you guys have an idea like, oh, this is what Celeste usually looks like when she's leaning or like this is where her shape's at. And mm-hmm. we can test these things and see how they look. But like, you've always told me practice multiple things because then you have it in your arsenal and it's like, you don't have, no one expects you to be perfect 15, 20, 30 weeks out, you know, but it's like, yeah. can you walk in your heels? Like even just putting your heels on to walk mm-hmm. around the house, you know, like that's, that's good. That's a good start. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And, and again, I know like everybody puts a lot of attention on the back pose, but again, the first thing people see, the judges see is the walk. The first thing they see mm-hmm. is the front pose. If you don't catch their attention, then, then maybe the back pose don't even, you know, it's not, really interested to, for them so anyway but going into the back pose because we haven't had that one yet uh, mm-hmm. they're looking at that glute separation they're looking at you know your lower girl legs your conditioning they it's very nerve-wracking for the girls to turn around it's just they're looking for those okay the round glutes like when they're super high on the sides right that's yeah. like so hard to get. You have clients that take so long to get that shape at the top, what is rounded and is conditioned, but it still looks feminine, right? It's such mm-hmm. a wow when they get that look. Wow. <laughs> and you are headed there, Mrs. Thank you. Evolution's been insane. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my yeah. gosh. Thank and you. At, the, at the last year, I remember being like, I've never seen your hamstrings come out like this. Like they yeah. were picking and the glute shape is changed. And because you're so good at documenting everything, it's so nice to go back and see, see the progress throughout the years. That's, that's awesome that you kept all of those pictures. And if you're ever like doubting yourself, you can go back and say like, okay, it, it pays off every exactly. time. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And anyway, so having that nice round conditioned glute, that still look feminine because they don't want striations on the glutes. They don't want dry glutes, you know? Um, so that's very important that they still look feminine and full. And number one thing, do not lean forward too far. Just a mm-hmm. tiny little push, not too much because the judges don't like that. Not even the men judges like that. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like it. And so again, if you have to bend so much to sew some hamstring, maybe you want to do another show. Okay. <laughs> Let's just talk about prepping a little bit longer. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, and yeah, about that girls need to prep longer. <laughs> they, you know, I still, because we do the, the our calls, like our consultations every day with a few clients, uh, prospects, not clients. Um, and that is amazing how fast they think they can achieve this. It's like, they I don't wish. Realize, yeah. But I think once they realize what, what, once they're on board and they actually start getting through the process, they realize how it takes time. But yeah. at the beginning, no, I think because of Instagram, they see people prepping fast and um, that's not what we want to do. We don't want to crush them like that. Right. But yeah. Um, unfortunately, yeah, there's a lot of still of like people wanting to do eight weeks, 10 weeks. I'm like, um, no, <laughs> no way. it's just not going to happen. But yeah, it happens. Let's just go more to like the minimum of 16 weeks. And that's like a minimum, you know? I find that so much nicer too. Like my last prep was amazing because uh, it's, every prep is different, but like last prep, it kept going and going because of all the cancellations, but that actually served me so well because we got a chance to like learn more about my body, take breaks, refeed, mm-hmm. you know, like we got these opportunities to just just do it different. And after that experience, I feel like what Joe's always taught me, like patience was finally really reinforced. Like 
gosh, yeah. like just be patient. Why would I, I realize why you want to rush something that you love? You know, like if you really love this lifestyle, it doesn't matter when you get on stage. And yeah, um, yeah, because they really, is it really what they love or is it just the outcome mm. that they want to experience and that final body? True. You know, and maybe because of that, because I, I love it. I, I love training, changing. I'm, <laughs> I'm like looking, I'm walking through the mirror as of lately. I've been in a building phase for you guys that don't know. I'm just been building muscle and I've been like glancing in the mirror more than I should probably, but um, <laughs> I see my shoulders coming out without flexing. I just mm-hmm. start seeing those cups that, and it's so exciting and motivating. And like, I don't want this to end. I'm so excited about the building process. So I'm going to be so sad when it's time to like stop the building process and start getting leaner. Yeah. Because, and, and then as I say this today, maybe tomorrow I say that I just want to be lean. <laughs> okay. If you guys competitors, I know you guys feel this way too. Oh my God. It's a curse. Like, Weren't you just talking about this, Celeste? Yes. We're just yes. like how some days you actually said it's so right. Like sometimes I'm like, oh yes. Like big booties are fun. Yeah. I'm here <laughs> and for that. Is so fun. And then all of a sudden I'm just going to get this fat off and I'm yep. going to reveal the physique already. <laughs> exactly get that eagerness because you know you've been putting in the work and you know what's possible and yeah Yeah. actually what yeah go ahead oh no just I was I don't even know what I was gonna say okay you can go ahead (laughs) I wanted to touch on what you said about your back pose and just back pose in general because with and I'm curious on your opinion on this but with the wellness division Mm -hmm. those glutes are much more they're still round but they're more squared off at the top than bikini And I think Mm -hmm. bikini competitors now have been, it's been really reinforced that you can't push back too hard in your back pose because it squares off your glutes at the top and they're not Mm -hmm. looking for that. And you said, you know, it needs to be round, needs to be feminine, not dry or anything. Um, How do you encourage someone to see like, it will look better when they feel like I just have to push it so that everything shows like how do you help someone to get that confidence no actually I just take a picture and then they need to understand what the judges are looking for and this is something that I was going with a client today actually even through zoom I do screen recordings or like screenshots of what I'm actually trying to make them understand that um it's not a hamstring contest so I I, they they honestly I don't know if because I've been doing this for so long they trust me right away so I never get somebody that is struggling no they get it right away so you know just the main thing I would say with the back post is like, you have to be very centered, right? So your, your weight has to be centered. You cannot be shifting. Sometimes we have um, a side of our bodies that is a little bit overpowering. It's a little bit stronger. And we tend to put more weight on that leg, right? So trying to just center and put the same balance in both legs, if I'm explaining myself. Yes. Um, then your hands down, of course. And we're going to push a little bit on those hands to get that nice definition that comes out on our arms, shoulders, back, even though we may have hair. hair. Um, they're not looking so much for the definition of that back body. I think it looks freaking good when there's yeah. some lines back there, right? Oh, Instead of like a softer back. So I always have the, like, the girls just push a little bit. Um, also making sure that separation between the feet is not too wide. Because when they spread their legs too much, they're, they're, it just changes the whole body symmetry. The hips get wider. They lose glute size, in my opinion. So like the separation should be like a shoulder feet apart, if not smaller. Okay. Of course, it changes in the individual. But yes, the hamstrings, the, the, the hamstrings that end, they, they pop. They pop when you actually do this right. Um, I will just say about the hair, because this is it's getting out of control, girls. Girls, if you're a hair flipper, it's getting a little bit out of control, girls. <laughs> it's not the WBFF. Like, I yeah, love the WBFF, I but love this it is not too, WBFF if you're an NPC. Good. Yeah, so uh, in the pro level, yes, they have like a minute routine, sometimes even longer. They don't really give them a time to end. So they are doing things to be more um, charismatic, uh, different, right? Everybody poses the same. So they're trying to do something that separates them from the rest, um, just a, a little bit more sexiness, right? In a classy way. So there's a lot more of that in the pro stage. But what happens, it translates to the amateur level. And then you have girls that have very short routines. They literally, the judges are saying next by the time they hit the back post and they're still trying to flip their hair. So you need to know, and this is something that I do and I just did it with you. Like, let's have mm-hmm. 
a routine where we actually are more elaborated. And when we're in our back pose, we do a little bit more of hair movement, step back, turn this way. That takes a lot longer. And then let's also have a simpler routine. Mm -hmm. So if that happens to you, you're not stuck. What do I do? Because then what's happening, girls are on the back pose. And if the judge says next, because you're already being judged, they like get freezing. They don't even know what they do. Sometimes they leave from behind. I've seen it all. I've they will it. leave from behind. Yeah, yeah, because it turns them on. It's not what they practice. They practice every day the same thing, and now they don't know what to do. So how about we practice what can happen? And if you don't know what can happen, why don't you go to a show and watch one show at least and film it so you know what to expect and what can happen? And then you'll be like, oh, I don't want that to happen to me. So many clients have told me, I'm so glad I went to see a show before I did it because now I know. And yeah. I know what not to do as well because they get to see that, right? Mm-hmm. So- I've definitely so felt rushed in that before. It's like, it yeah. sucks because you're like, I'm like about to do my sign. I remember it was like Legends Classic Muscle mm. Contest 2018. I was, oh, you was know a, it exactly. I like, know. The show threw me off. <laughs> <laughs> it was that show. My One of my best, I think it was probably one of my best shows. It was the first time I called for, nat- for nationals, which was cool, but it was such a small show. And yet I was so rushed. And I remember doing my sign off and it was so awkward. Everything didn't flow because they said the next girl's name. And I was just like, Ooh, I need to get off. And I'm like dropping my arms weird and then barely raising my arm up to sign. It was just, I was yeah, like, damn. You see, so knowing that in that case, okay, what do you do? We're going to just not do a step back. We're just going to straight to the front. We're going to turn from that, from that S shape pose or the T pose. We're just going to do a salutation from there. Yeah. And you look like you totally kept it together. And we just had to exit the stage because the judge was done. Literally the other girl is coming on stage as you're leaving. So you yeah. have to adjust to that. And I always say, try to finish your routine um, if that happens. But if you feel that you've been disrespected because the judges already have made a decision and they kind of want you off the stage, then just go, you know? Mm-hmm. And I know it's hard because you work so hard and you want to do the whole thing. And let me tell you that they've been a lot better. Uh, this year, the shows have been absolutely amazing. I've been going since the very first Muscle Contest show this year. And uh, they've been really giving their girls their time. They're letting them finish their routine. Their girls are doing more elaborate, a little bit more elaborated routines. Um, there's more calm. So I like that they're doing that. I think they realize how important it is uh, to, they kind of put themselves in their shoes, you know? And I think it helped them level up and, and do better for the girls. You know, a lot of the times, you know, the people working backstage that expediters, they've never been in a bikini posing before. They don't know what it is. So when that expediter tells you, hey, uh, fast, fast, eight seconds, it totally throws you off. Yeah. Right. So So I think that actually realizing that they can't do that. You guys work too hard. You invested a lot of your time, sacrificed a lot, a lot of your money. You paid a lot of your money to the shows as well between, you know, classes, registrations, NPC cards and all of that. So I think they've realized that and been really happy with how the shows have been performing this year. Uh, The only ones I have attended, of course, have been muscle content. So I cannot Mm -hmm. really say for other show, other promoters, but I've been really happy with, with seeing that because I'm being able to teach my girls also to be a little bit more playful and So yeah, that was exciting to see. And also what I've liked is that usually when you do a second class, you'll just do kind of a front pose and a salutation or something like that. And then you exit the stage. But now they're actually, the girls are doing the full routine again. So I really like that too. Yeah. That they feel they have another chance, right? Another chance to show their physique as well. So I like that too. I don't know if it's going to continue like that, but it's been happening. Oh, and Celeste, yeah. very important that I say on the back post. I have yes, to say, this. please do not look down on the floor. Mm. This is also something very common as the girls are moving through the glute pop transition. They're kind of looking at the ground to see where their feet's header or to see if their separation is good. And then they're forgetting that head. So <laughs> they're keeping their head down. So you have to bring that up because it really affects the, the back and the shoulders look. So that B taper shape doesn't really happen when you're looking down. So if you're listening to this, remember that part, uh, keeping your head up. And how far up should people keep their head? Do you think? So some people will bring it really high, right? I'm not really happy about looking up either. Yeah, Just I think straight it looks on. a little uncomfortable. It looks a little odd. <laughs> I get like yes. maybe like lifting your eyes up so your chin goes up a bit, but like yeah, but no. bending it, I'm like, that doesn't even, yeah. you know? <laughs> I sometimes like where are people getting this stuff oh my god it's just it's just so funny ay, 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 ay. And, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway um 
you know, I, there's and another thing, like Joe says this all the time to the girls, like, you know, when you're, you, if you are married or you are, you know, in your wedding day, let's just imagine there's, you're, you're planning your wedding day to go a certain way. And then sometimes it just doesn't happen. You know, so sometimes you prep so hard, you practice every day, you do everything the way you're supposed to. And then the show just really gets thrown off. There's like things that there's a pro show in the middle of the amateurs. Right. And now instead of going on stage at 12, you're going on stage at 3 p.m. And you've already done your pump, you're posing, you took a little bit of sugar for that extra pump. Your physique is ready. Mm -hmm. And now you have to hold on like, wow, this happens, girls. But this happens. This is part of the sport there's a lot of variables and things that can happen instead of getting frustrated you just gotta roll with the punches and and just keep a good close eye on your physique and just try try to do your best with your mindset because yeah. you know or or like okay the floors for example you know how we always I always tell the girls and I told you a million times to always practice on carpet yes industrial <laughs> carpet is good I've got my turf like at the <laughs> Um, at my house that I have you guys practice on because the floors are not you cannot flow there's not slippery you know they're they can't you cannot like how would you say drag your feet or like churning ways that right there's no pivot there's no yeah there's no pivot pivot because there's like industrial carpet not only that but sometimes there's some cables do you feel that there's cables underneath that carpet I've felt cables and I've felt stage separation Mm. you see (laughs) So what happens when, so then it throws you off, you get nervous because you got thrown off by the freaking cable (laughs) and now (laughs) you feel super dehydrated (laughs) and and then you're like lightheaded and the lights are too bright. And then, oh, it's just, I, 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 I totally understand because I've been there, you know, I've done these three years myself. So I understand. And, and it's just kind of, part of show day yeah <laughs> show day punches sometimes they just don't go as smooth as they should be and if you make a mistake or if you don't make a mistake but there's a little bump on the ground or something that throws you off and you almost fell you just have to pick yourself back up and pretend like nothing happened even so really, like even like yeah. tape on the ground too mm-hmm. like I, but I gotta say like I sometimes don't like it when I'm backstage and girls are like Oh, there's a cable on the ground and there or on the floor. The carpet's really this. And I'm like, don't tell me that, you know, like part of mm. me wants to know. And then our part of me is like, okay, but I don't want to look for it. I'm just going to like, so usually when I'm in line backstage, I like look at the ground on the stage mm. and I'm like, what, like, what's my best path to that X, you know, yes. <laughs> that helps. But then you don't know. Sometimes you get surprised. <laughs> you get surprised, but I think it's better to deal with that than to deal with you falling because the floor is sticky or slippery yes. from people's um, spray um, oils because yeah. bodybuilding classes go before you guys. So it's sick competitors um, that do sometimes or fitness that they do routines on the ground and yeah. then it gets really slippery. So I've seen a lot of people fall on stage by now. I'm doing this for so long and that is devastating for a competitor. So it's almost better to just do a little kind of unbalance than actually fall. So I know why they do it. I just wish there was another way of putting that carpet down you know yeah and I don't know I may bring it up there may be a way let's do like a boating thing yeah. <laughs> see how can we fix the stages and I know why there's cables sometimes because the lights are connected and then they put the tape so the the cables are staying nice and down so you guys don't fall yeah but then it also makes it hard so it's like what do you want a sticky slippery because of the oils and you can fall or you know, that carpet yeah. that doesn't feel like you can flow. And then you really have to pick up, you know, you have to pick up your feet. You have to learn to pose, picking up your feet and not dragging it so much. Ah, a lot yes. of things, right? Oh, I so hope much. I'm not overwhelming you girls. I may tell you too much. Sometimes it's better to just do and nothing, all the extras that can yeah. happen. But again, if you kind of fall, you keep going, you play it off, you keep smiling. The judges are not going to place you lower because that happened to you. Just don't, don't cringe like your face um, because you stumble a little, okay? Just keep going and it didn't happen. You know the story of one of our clients, right? That lost the shoe 
and she didn't oh, lose the shoe. Yes. It went, it, it flew with projectile oh, like my God. to the other side of the stage. And thankfully, I think I actually talked about this in the other podcast, but if, uh, yeah, I did. But anyway, in case you didn't listen to the other podcast, this girl, she was a pro, no, she was not a pro competitor, but she was an actress. And she, I think this helped her a lot. The fact that she knew, she knew how to improvise, right? Yeah. So she went barefoot to pick up that shoe came back to the center and put her shoe back in such a classy, cute way that she ended up winning the overall that night. Wow. And yeah, she did win. She won. She was a master's competitor. She won the master's overall. And yeah, her shoe flew. So what other people would have done if the shoe flew so far that you have to walk off your square and then come back? you most likely like get like so embarrassed and like you, you can totally see on your face, but she kept smiling and people were clapping. And sometimes That's I think, cool. I wonder if she actually took it the overall because she was a great competitor, but there was also other really good competitors. I wonder that had such a factor on her winning, you know, yeah. how well she, she responded to that, you know? And, and yeah, and the, the, the face, like she kept her composure you know yeah. she did she did that poise on stage is uh key in that confidence too like knowing like I deserve my time like I don't deserve a shoe flying off I'm going to put it back on I'm going to do my routine and you know I think there's a lot of things that can impede on someone's confidence and I got a question actually from someone mm-hmm. who said that they had something impeding on their confidence and they want actually I got this a few times but they wanted okay. to know if you have any tips for hiding loose skin or stretch marks on mm. stage. Yeah. So there's a lot of, uh, a, a lot of our competitors, as you know, they're moms mm-hmm. and a lot of them have both loose skin and stretch marks. And let me just tell you that me sitting really close behind the judges on those sits, I always try to find like the center point so I can see the girls like a hundred percent. You don't see it. You don't see it. So it's more in your head. I know it's there. I know it could be from the pregnancies, but you don't see it. If your angles are dialed in, you will be able to hide it. As well, posing nice and soft and slow, it will keep the skin nice and tight as you're moving through. So don't put so much power in that and make sure that doesn't um, stop you from competing. Make sure that doesn't stop you because that should not be why. Um, you can still do really well with a little bit of loose skin and stretch marks. Now, let's say if it's a lot of loose skin, I'm going to be very honest. If it, if it affects your conditioning on your core, not your conditioning, the conditioning is going to be there, but if it affects the judges to see that conditioning, then most likely it will affect you. I'm not going to sugarcoat mm-hmm. it because it's, I have to be real with this. I'm not going to say something is not a little bit of shoe of a little bit of skin. Sorry, my son just walked in the house. Gianni, baby, I am doing a podcast. Hi, Gianni. Just let's be saying hi. <laughs> Sorry, baby, but I'm doing a podcast. Sorry, guys. I know Salah's <laughs> not going to edit that, but that's my G. <laughs> uh, you still homeschool, but almost over. We're almost going back to reality now. So anyway, what I was saying um, that I don't want that to stop you, but you also need to know that if it affects your conditioning, then it may it may affect you if, if they just can only see what they, they can only judge what they see, right? So again, there is, with nutrition training and time, your skin will get tighter, okay? And then with the right posing and angles, again, it will look even tighter. That's all that you can do. That is what's in your control. Everything else is just not on your control. So I hope this doesn't discourage you to not compete if you have, um, you know, a, some skin. And a lot of the times it's so funny because the girls will say that I have a lot of stretch marks, a lot of skin. And then when I actually see them, I'm like, where? Yeah. Like they think it's so much and it's not, it's right. not because I feel like if somebody had a lot, a lot of loose skin, like to the point that it was like too much, they probably wouldn't do it. They put in, they probably wouldn't choose to do this sport yet. You know, hmm, they maybe point. wait until their skin, you know, needs more time to kind of bounce back. Or sometimes, sometimes they'll do a little bit of a procedure to get some skin, you know, because there's the only way if it completely has lost the elasticity and there's no other way of fixing it. However, I like to resort to that to the very end. Like if, if right. the girls need to go under the knife, that's like the very end, because sometimes just the nutrition and training and the hydration, it just is, makes wonders. Like we had a client, I'm not going to say the name, but uh, I'll tell you later who she is, but <laughs> she, she turned pro really quick with us too. 
um, she switched teams. So she's a few times now, but um, mm-hmm. she had that problem um, on her l- belly button and lower abdomen. And she went pro like this. She was really able to keep it really tight through her transitions. But if you actually saw her standing, you know, you probably think like, mm, I think it's going to affect her. I think it's affecting her core. And she went pro like this. You yeah. know, and now with more time training, now it's been a few years that she's been training. It's a lot tighter. I keep keeping an eye on her sometimes. I'm like, wow, she's really come a long way and the skin keeps getting tighter. So, so yeah. that's to that. Um, there's, there's nothing else. You're taking your vitamins, you're eating healthy, you're staying hydrated, you're training hard, your skin will respond better just with those things alone. So yeah, that's all you can do. Definitely. But again, the stage lights actually, you feel that sometimes they bring out more. They actually done. It actually they hide a lot too. They do you know what's funny? They actually um define you more and you see more of the vascularity conditioning more than the other way around. Yeah. So like I feel it really hides more of the flaws more than the girls think. And yeah. because they are under those lights themselves and they're really bright, they may think that they're totally exposed, but it's actually not. It's actually not. Okay. Right. Same thing with tattoos. Sometimes they'll have a tattoo right on their core. I've seen this happening a lot, right in their oblique. Oh, they <laughs> love their tattoo until they had to compete. And then it's like right on the oblique line. So sometimes it's actually covering some of that conditioning on those lines on that oblique and I feel tattoos don't affect you at all when it comes to competing. There's girls with full sleeves and like a lot of our clients have tattoos. It doesn't affect them. But if they land in a place where it could hide, you know, and it's really dark and big, then sometimes it could hide a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's to say that too. Yeah. And and, and practice is key. I know everybody says the same practice, 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 but smoother you want, you want the day to be as smooth as possible. So just go smooth. And that's only going to happen if you practice, you've done, you've done everything that you could, right. You've prepped for like whatever, four five, six months, and you've done everything that you could. And now you just got to bring that confidence because you've done everything that you could have done. And how would it feel when you actually go on stage, knowing that you give everything you, you, you could, because mm-hmm. I always think like, when you don't, how, how is the mindset afterwards? Right. Like I couldn't handle it. I couldn't deal with it myself. I personally know I I couldn't handle it if I knew that I could have done better. Well, it's like, I remember when I was playing volleyball, it was like, you could win a match and play your worst game ever. Like, oh my gosh, I didn't get, you know, like I was a setter or I was a libero. If I didn't save as many balls or I didn't put up as many good balls for the setter, like as a setter, I'd be so annoyed. I'd be like, we might've won that game, but we didn't play our best. It's like, that's not worth celebrating, you know? And mm. I think that stuck with me even through competing where you could win, but if you don't know that you did your best or gave everything you could, is it really that gratifying? Probably not. Mm. That's what I mean. And I don't know if I, I don't want to deal with that mindset after right. knowing. Yeah. So just give your best and hire a posing coach the same way you hire your contest prep coach. I know a lot of them are men and they don't do this. And sometimes they'll tell you, watch some YouTube videos or some, you know, I post tons of posing videos myself. So you may watch my videos, but it's so different girls. Even our clients will watch those videos before they come. And then when they are here, it's a completely different story. Yeah. So you really need somebody that can, can help you and that they have, they can create a routine for you not for everybody else, not the same thing as everybody else, you know, and, and especially if it's a posing coach, um, you have to think, uh, how can I say this in a sweet way? (laughs) Just somebody that knows the judge's perspective. Yeah. You know, sometimes like I would say, how long have they been doing this for, you know, just because they can pose themselves doesn't mean they can teach it. So they need to understand the judge's perspective. So, so talk to them before hiring them, you know, yes. same way you would do with a contest prep coach, because it's such an important and intimate part of a prep actually. And that's why it's something that I've always done myself. And I'm having really hard time delegating, even though I could, because it's just a very intimate part that I'm not willing to let go. Right. You know, and to have somebody come not confident a lot of the times they'll feel really insecure when they get into a bikini for the first time. They're like, oh, naked in front of, 
Ingrid, and suddenly husband's popping up, and then suddenly there's a kid running around, and then there's another competitor <laughs> joining here, and then there's another competitor coming to talk. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm naked, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. So really, uh, it really it, sometimes it can make you feel a little bit insecure, and like I see how they come in, and then I see how they leave, and that is so amazing. Mm. Like the messages I get after classes, it like wow. Like, well, you make it so easy though, like when I was less secure in my posing and my body, I remember being like, wow, Ingrid, like I didn't even, I forgot. I felt that way when I came in because you just, you're non-judgmental. You just focus on what needs to be done. You're very encouraging. So like, it's easy to leave feeling more empowered because that's the type of person you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, everybody can pose really. Some may have more rhythm than others, but everybody, even when they struggle, there's some people that will take a little bit longer to learn. I push them as much as I can. And I, I make sure they live really confident with what they learn. Even if it's been just, let's get through the angles today. Yeah, We're not going to create a full thing. We're just going to focus on really hitting those angles. And then we'll next class will help them blend together and create a flow. But, but if they can just really master what I teach them, they live a hundred percent confident. If I push too hard and I give them too much and they feel that nothing makes sense. And now they don't even know whether they're going back or front or, or they're completely blocked on their brain, then, okay, it's time to stop. This is too much for them. It's they're not having fun. And I've had a lot of clients tell me like what a horrible experience they've had and how uh, miserable they felt during a posing class and <laughs> and not confident or that doesn't look good like they'll say things like that I'm like whoa <laughs> so I'm sad I'm sorry that there's such a shitty people I'm gonna say that word out there yeah um that and oh can we say something about those hips really quick yeah um the hips so the hips the archment on your lower back and also the hips um if you can do some mobility and recovery like workouts like Right after the routine, you're going to do a recovery little session, which is a stretching session that you can find on YouTube. It really helps with pose, okay? Because when you build muscle, sometimes you get really stiff <laughs> and it's actually hard to move. It's really yeah. hard to move and flow. So after a training session, get a good stretching routine going, just a few exercises, and then also doing mobility. And I, you know, I do a lot of mobility and I wonder if this is why I'm able to flow myself like this. You know, my entire family does jujitsu. So yeah. my kids do mobility workouts in the garage with my husband and I join them so much. I open up those hips and I do yeah. a lot of the jujitsu warmups and the you're opening. Yeah. Yeah. And, and moves that are just for that. So I wonder if that helps me. So try Probably. to really work on those hips and that tilt, you know, as much as you can. And sometimes the tilt on that, it just won't happen immediately. So it's something that you really have to train yourself. And sometimes your lower back kind of hurts a little bit. So, so <laughs> really of. remember <laughs> to recover after a workout with a good stretching routine that again, you can, I don't need to tell you what to do. You can find it on YouTube and then doing a little bit of mobility. You know, I think that really will help with getting the hips moving free, like feeling free that your body can, is like yellow moving around yes. yeah those are good those are good insights like the the fact is it's not just about hitting your angles and hitting your poses but it's also like what's preventing you from maybe being better like get your mobility work in of course get your stretching in like I started using a yoga wheel I also started seeing um like ever since last season I just started seeing a body work guy to treat me like once a month at the least. And he's helped me. And there's things where I'm like, this feels so tight in this pose, like, or my lat won't open up further or my shoulders keep rounding and he'll work it. And then suddenly I'm like, Whoa, I can move again. And I think those are little things that get forgotten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So like you're taking, you're actually even getting professional help to improve your, your, your body, the way I've been doing it too. I've been doing this kind of the same type of treatments that you've been doing. And I sense, I feel a lot better since yeah. I've been doing it. And so whether it's a chiropractor or somebody like what Celeste is telling you, that is more towards the sports type of, um, I will redirect more towards like a sport right. type of guy. Sports How massage. would you call it? Sports massage. They, they, I, that, somebody Physio. that really understand the sports, like yeah. the bikini competitor body really. 
it has yeah they have to get it they have to get it yes because like you're putting your body in such a natural positions and this is why it's hard at the beginning to teach posing because it's not coming natural you're you're facing your glutes are going forward your core is going sideways your upper body is going to the front your torso is going this way but it, and if you miss that line if you pass by a hair like if you it's just the post completely changes so that already can put you from first to fifth. So it's just so hard to hold those unnatural positions for a long time. The, the back hurts. So yeah, taking care of your body and doing things like that. And if you cannot afford, for example, to hire somebody professionally, then really do your recovery after your yeah. workouts and, and really do things that can help you, um, you know, because your spine hurts. I don't know. I'm just older, but mine hurts after doing like a Every few classes a day. Hurts. I'm like, I can't even walk almost, you yeah. know? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. I so, mean, what else? What else did we talk about? Well, I have a few things that I want to go and we'll kind of do the, the suit stuff fast, but I want to okay. ask you one more thing about your opinion on something I see. And I've done this and I, I question myself sometimes, but like backstage, you know, you're posing and you're posing and you're practicing posing. And then this past year really focused on like putting my feet up more, not posing as much because mm. I've got it. And I wanted to yeah. know, like, do you see a big impact or how can someone know if they're starting to pose so much backstage that it's actually negatively impacting their physique? Yeah. So I pose, for example, when I'm backstage with the girls, I pose, um, only to make sure everything is dialed in, their angles are on point because sometimes things can change as their physique gets super, super, you know, conditioned that day, especially after, you know, there's a huge change between the night before and the day off sometimes in some girls. So I like to pose for that reason and also to make sure they're confident to hit the stage. And, and just, it really helps when I practice a little bit of posing with them, but I don't go over the top unless it's necessary because they're just not getting it. Yeah, I have done it also over the top because I've had... Um, this year, actually a really good competitor. I'm not saying names, but she's amazing. She actually won the overall and she was just not showing what she needed to be showing. And I was really worried that she was not going to take it. I knew she had the potential, but I knew that it wasn't happening consistently. So sometimes she'll post and do it right. And sometimes she'll post and won't. So for her, I did post tons. So I think it really depends on <clears throat> on on the client but if you are alone backstage and you feel you do your routine a couple of times you have to do it a couple of times because you know when I'm on stage just like right the body's cold and I don't even know what I'm doing right now so you want to definitely get into the flow so do it a couple of times but of course not over posing because if you already got it just rest and they will help you with any water retention that you may get from standing on those heels for so long mm -hmm. and there's also I, I love pumping right I, like 15 to 30 minutes before going on stage I love a pumping session um, because it does help the girls also with their confidence they just feel a little bit more round they feel you know it's not going to make a huge difference it really is not your body's already made pumping is not going to make you win but it does help the girls psychologically feeling just fuller right yeah so I really focus on 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 the glutes and on the shoulders to to just get you know that extra little edge I will say that may help them a lot in their mind um but again not so much there's people pumping since the very meet yeah since the morning they're sweating they're oh, freaking squatting and stuff i'm like why are you squatting right now why are you doing push-ups <laughs> and like they're your squatting in heels and yeah. they're doing push-ups yeah. heels what the heck okay there's like sweat falling down their chest their tan is a mess like their hair is a mess it's just not worth it. Let's just focus on like isolated moves that really target those body parts that we want, that the judges are looking for. That's it. And don't get too worked up because if you have to be sweating and flexing, do you really did all your work during prep? Like we don't need to do a full workout here. And I honestly also worry about water retention when they do too exactly. much. Exactly. Like, like I'm like, you're creating that such an inflammation yeah. in your body. Like I'm just worried about like this firing you back. And like, yeah, let's just not do that, girls. Like they get blurry, you know? <laughs> It's not as sharp. Yeah, 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 yeah. And oh, we forgot something important. What's this? The eye contact. Eye contact. Good point. Can't believe it. Just stare at those judges. They want it. Give <laughs> it to just, them. Not just at the head judge, all judges. 
Yeah. Let's just say that because some people really focus in just the head. Just everybody has a point and everybody's marking you there. So everybody counts. Of course, you want to focus also on the head judge, but everybody else is too. So you kind of, your eyes are kind of going to glance side to side as you're walking on stage. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. a good point. Like yeah. vision, making eye contact with people. And like, I've heard Sandy say, like some people will look just over the judges' heads. And I think it's, feels actually really good when you make eye contact with judges or something that like empowers you where you're like yeah like mm-hmm. I'm looking some I'm looking my goals in the face literally yeah I you're deserve leading, it. letting them know that I've worked so hard and I'm here pulling all the tricks I'm here like really performing yeah and you're keeping your smile even though sometimes the judges have that mean look on their face right yeah <laughs> Every girl right now is going to crack up because That's sometimes so you're like, do you know, do you like me? Yeah. Like, <laughs> what did I do? Is there and something then you off? actually end up winning, right? But yeah. it's just that that's, they're seeing body after body after body. So they just roll like neutral. <laughs> yeah. Now I know Sandy smiles a lot. Sandy, right? always, yeah. Like when I went out in front of her, I heard her and she smiles all the time. And then I went out and I was like, oh my gosh, I feel so loved. And like, yeah. I judged in front of an all female panel as well at Samson ace of stage yeah. and all of them I felt so warm you know I was like this is cool like so yeah. it is nice when they smile but be prepared for some mean mugging you know it's not always yeah it's pretty. not always <laughs> but you know because you've practiced so much with that stage smile you practice in all your posting classes this is something I also have the girls do uh the moment you start walking okay let's walk on your face too yeah. So, you know, for a minute we had some mask so we could cover our mouth, but now the masks are off again since this, you know, the whole thing that happened. So now you, you're fully visible again. So you have to smile even when you feel silly and you will feel silly if you have a judge that is kind of looking at you really neutral with no look <laughs> and you're like smiling at him, right? Yeah. You feel silly, but you have to keep it up. Even so like just, Tyler Mannion posted like, I can't believe I look like this when I'm judging you guys. Like, no wonder you say yeah. it, you know, because it's like what well, they're focused, you know, they're, they've had a long they're day. They're focused. So really don't thing. just take it personal and don't think that they don't like you. You want to definitely stare down at those judges and catch their eye and pretend that you are in the practice. You know how I always say, okay, look at the judging panel. As soon as you walk on straight, you're pretending. And I always tell them, don't look just at me. Just you're going to glance through the entire panel. You're not looking just at my face. Like when I, just look at the entire panel. So I always do a pretend type of thing. And I get the girls going through what everything that could happen on stage because I don't want them to get thrown off because there's things that sometimes happen and sometimes don't, right? Right. So, and also practicing coming on stage from different sides. Sometimes you'll come from the left and for the most part is the left. And sometimes you'll actually start coming from the right. Like you just don't know. So practicing walking on different directions, uh, practicing leaving the stage on different directions. So just so nothing is gonna throw you off. There's a morning show and then there's a night show. Sometimes the night show, they have you do that amazing like tea walk entrance. Practice that too, so you know what to do. And if you don't know what to do, is because if you're listening to this and you don't know that all these things can happen, then you need to hire somebody. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, um, and yeah, and walk slow and control and not so slow. Cause I remember Celeste, we oh, just boy. went through this together. <laughs> um, cause you were very flowy, very controlled. Your glutes are nice and turned up. Like you were doing everything right, but it was just a little too bit too slow. Yeah. So now we brought a little bit of fire. Yes. So it's a slow, it's controlled, but it has a little bit more fire, a little bit more of tempo, rhythm. Right. So, so yeah, you, you've really pulled it off the one time I told you and you just, it just took one time. Oh, well, I appreciate <laughs> you, that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, the walking is very, very, very important um, at all times. When you come on stage, when you walk to the back of the stage, sometimes they'll have you do that. Sometimes they don't. Um, when you exit the stage, when you get placed on the diagonals of the stage, there's a lot of walking happen on stage. So, yeah. And they're, they want to see, like you said earlier, that conditioning. Now I do want to ask you some things with regards to suits and regards to just like the overall presentation. So when you're picking a suit, do you think that someone should think about matching it to their makeup or do you think it's better to just pick your suit and then let let the rest Mm. you know 
So I think your suit definitely plays a, like a big role on like the final look for the stage. I think depending on your hair color, depending on your makeup is going to be, if you really think about it, the makeup is pretty much the same, right? Yeah. Like the, most girls will wear a very similar type of makeup. They change a little bit like the shadow color, depending if they have blue eyes or dark eyes, just like what you would do with when you do regular makeup, right? But it really has a very similar look. So I don't really think the makeup will play such a big role. Um, the lip will do more than anything, but what is the base is very similar to your body. It's just a little bit lighter, but also on the darker side, there's a little bit of contouring and then the shadows could change a little bit, but I'm not fan of like matching a green shadow with a green suit. Yeah. I'm not really um, so fan of that. Maybe they want to put a little bit of a green tone to it. Yes. Like a little sparkle of green. I would be okay with that, but not when I see girls completely like green that's a little disturbing to me so it definitely plays a um a big role your suit what what i would it plays the biggest role in the way it looks on your body to be honest i've okay. seen so many girls that have gone won competitions with a few crystals on them i'm just gonna be very honest yeah it's more about accentuating the physique to the max right mm -hmm. and you do that showing for example on your back pose you are going to show your glutes completely like the very top part of the glute right um if the glute covers too much on your bottoms then you're not gonna have that glute look if i can say and it's also yeah. very hard to explain without without pictures but like you get a feeling of like the cat needs to show the roundness on the top of the glutes Right. Um, I always like when there's a little bit of a heart shape or some people will call it sweetheart. I like that better at the top because I feel the glutes just become a little bit bigger when they're, you know, when it has that um, heart shape at the very top. Yeah. Sometimes if there's too straight or too vertical, sometimes it does make the glutes more square. Yeah, like when they kind of yeah. look triangular, like they come. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like when the, it's super triangular. Like a T. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't like how it looks. And sometimes the girls will do well because they have an awesome physique, but it could be even better by the way the cut was on their glutes. So also making sure that it's not too tight and dean in your skin as you know, you can be super tight and super conditioned and still sometimes being too tight. And that's why I usually will hold off until the girls are kind of ready to close their suits. Sometimes I even let them close it themselves because I worry sometimes they're different sizes every time and every show you can have a different size and we have to constantly be readjusting those bottoms to make sure it fits the new physique, because if you're a competitor, you will always be improving. So your physique will change. So mm -hmm. if it digs into your skin, it can actually give you a really not the right look okay so just not having it too tight um also not too tight around the glutes because it can push you know a little bit of the fat out if i can say i don't like to say that word mm -hmm. but if it's pushing on the glutes it could really just make a, a little bit of a bump in there um so that's why i think it's very important to to if you already get your suit closed, great, because less stress for you. They kind of did it towards whatever measurements you give them, but just know that it could change. And you have the opportunity of like putting it on. If it doesn't feel right, you can very easily open it. Most suit manufacturers will leave a little bit of a string so you can readjust it. So, or, or you can also take it to one of those dry cleaners that will adjust it for you. So, so yeah, um, it definitely mm -hmm. can really affect your glute shape. So, so for sure, um, it's very important. Also, um, sometimes like the connector, like making sure yes. it's not a super crazy connector because it can affect the way, like, let's say on your first front pose, like the one you sit on your glute, how mm -hmm. would you call that pose? So let's, how can we call it? Uh, we so can call it the Courtney King. She brought it, she brought okay. it to life. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then the next one we'll call it like the S shape or the yeah. T pose. Okay. So the Courtney King pose, um, that one, you're putting so much weight on your glute that it can actually make you have, uh, the connector can really dig on whatever leg you're sitting on, on the glute that you're actually putting all the weight on. Mm -hmm. It can actually dig into your skin, not bringing the right look. 
So when you put it, your bikini on, practice doing the poses so you know if you need to be readjusted. Sometimes I leave whatever side they're posing on a little bit looser than the other. And sometimes we have completely different measurements in our hips and you'll have a lot more string in one side and less in the other. Hmm. So that's why it's so hard sometimes to just get the suit boom done, you know, because it can change. Um, so- Laying the connector on the hip, I think is very important. That's what I'm trying to say. It could be too low. The connector could be too low, bringing the illusion of a really long torso and then not proportionate with your legs, right? Yes. And it could also be too high when now your torso looks tiny. Yeah. So, wow, now we're here. Really, I'm making the girls more even stretch right now. <laughs> no, I think it's good information. Like these are things that really need to be considered. Like I think I used to wear my suit too low. And then like the, like mm-hmm. you said earlier, the industry evolves a lot. And then like people started wearing their suits higher, like on their hips. And that made a big difference in how my physique looked. Like, I feel like it showcased things more, but I know that there's so much that goes into finding the right suit. So I was hoping you could share, like, how does someone know, like if they went to the website and they were like, going to start ordering a suit from you, what can they expect from start to finish? And and yeah, what can they expect from start to finish as yeah. far as picking it out? So I have already tons of information there for them to know, like, no, that is not, it's, I don't want to bring a stress to them. You know, what I want is like, exactly what do you want? What do you really feel in your heart and make sure it works with your skin tone, hair color and all of that. So I usually require like a picture. If they're my clients, I don't need a picture because I already know them, but if they're <laughs> not my teammates clients, then I will ask for a picture. I actually also have them send pictures in any bathing suit, in any uh, triangle bikini top. Because a lot of the girls will have implants, right? But they'll yeah. be like, some girls can have, let's say, 300 cc's and have a B cup. And some girls with 300 cc's have a D cup. So you that cannot really sense. just like, you know, t- do a bikini top based on that size. And sometimes the measurements can be a little off when they measure themselves. So I always like to see a picture. And if you've been doing this for a long time, and I know other suit manufacturers are doing this for a long time, you're able to tell right away as soon as you see a picture or a little video. Honestly, yeah. so quick that you know exactly if that client will be great with a medium top or like a larger top or an XL top. Yeah, you, you'll know right away. So don't feel afraid of like actually communicating with the manufacturer and have them send you really sending pictures of your current size or like how you look in other bikini tops or what you like. Some girls like they have big um, breasts <laughs> yeah. and they like very little coverage. They like a lot of side boob, right? Yeah. And some girls like, no, 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 that's too much. I want more cover. So also what works for you? So if a girl tells me that, you know, I'm really a size C, but I really like a full coverage on the top, then, okay, then I'm maybe push you for a large top, you know? Yeah. So it really, it depends. So I think the amount of the top, I like it to keep on the classier side. I see a lot of side boob on stage. I don't like it, girls. I don't like it. Do you like it, Celeste, when you see that big chunk? I don't. On the I think on the side, you've like, seen I it. it. I know you told me before. Yeah, like I get it for sure. Why people maybe want to, if they think it elaborates their physique, like whatever. But I don't know. I'm just like, what if it pops out more? Sometimes yeah. it looks imbalanced. I don't really like it, to be honest. Not only that, but I feel that like the right amount of fabric on the top, it really changes your shape. Yeah. And that's why when girls maybe don't have implants and they're, you know, sometimes they, they are a caps, like they don't have breast tissue, you know, and that mm-hmm. should never not stop you from competing. You should compete with no implants and no breast tissue, girl. You should do it Everybody's, <laughs> because honestly, once we fill it up, we put, usually I always make um, lining pockets on my bikinis, right? So we can yeah. put any padding that they like, especially when um, they don't have a lot of breast tissue. They have all these tricks, you know, they'll do rise and all kinds of things that they like to do. But I still like to fill it up with a uh, pillow fluff myself and to give that illusion and that volume that kind of, you know, your shoulders are round, then there's a little bit of volume on your breast, your glutes are round, your calf is popping as well. Right. So I do it for that reason, but I think it really, if you don't have enough coverage, sometimes it really, I don't like how the balance looks on the body. If that, I think it, it has an effect on it, to be honest. Yeah. Um, totally. Yeah. And I think having a suit that has pockets that are, you know, you can remove and add any pattern you like is very, very important. So you can do whatever you want with your breast, girl. Like yeah. <laughs> whatever you want, just play with it. And some girls completely take it off 
And then, so ask, does my suit comes with lining pockets so I can put any padding that you want? And that's very important. And yeah. there's no really, it's very smooth process. The girls will really just know what they want. I've seen your girl wearing this suit. They'll say that I want the exact same thing. Usually girls yeah. will want the exact same thing somebody else have done before. It's, it feels safer to them. And if it's something that they just really like, why try to do something crazy or yeah. try to play with all these kind of different crystals or different connectors when something's already worked for somebody, girls tend to stick with that. And I'm happy about that because it's safer. The judges always kind of go with the same type of colors. So why change what's broke, what's not broken, right? Yes. Um, so yeah, there's also all kinds of patterns that you can use on bikini tops if you need it. If, if the bikini, of course, has padding on it. Um, I think that I, the right bikini can definitely help you stand out even though I don't think it's so much about like, you know, even though all my suits are fully encrusted with crystals, I've seen plenty of girls with like semi-encrusted suits killing the shows and yeah. winning shows. So again, it's more about showing your physique to the full potential with the cut of the suit. Okay. So, so I think that's, I'm just being very honest because I know some girls are paying crazy amounts of money, right? Like over a thousand dollars or something like that. And then just know that sometimes you don't need that. Um, there's also rentals. I do rentals. And so many other uh, people out there do rentals. Um, you will order a suit is depending on the suit is 150 to $200. Um, the suit gets shipped to you and the suit comes back to me. That's it. You can, I always, all my rentals have extra string on the back on the glutes in case you need to loosen them up. So it will always fit. It will always fit because you can always alter them. And you can do a last minute alteration so easy. I actually also ship um, a sewing kit with needles and thread just in case. And if not, just the alteration lady, honestly, in the they do it so quick because it's such a minor thing to open up the back and let it go a little bit. Um, just know that there's, a, there's going to be a weight loss that you're going to go through at the end. It's kind of crazy, right? How the body changes oh at the gosh, end. It's, it's like so a transformer. Crazy. So you yeah. don't know exactly. And every time it changes and you weigh different and every time you compete. So like, how are you going to know your exact measurements? It's never going to be perfect. It's never going to be this measures. So it's really hard, you know, to know. So I think it's good to be able to have enough string that you can alter your own suits if you need to. So I'll request that when you order a suit too. And if you want to look at my... Um, um, website is ingridromerobikinis.com and you can take a look at everything that I have going on there. Um, it's always that I've done more inter internally with my own clients. I've never been one to really promote the bikinis because it's kind of, it goes really hand on hand with my training. Um, but I definitely sell also to other clients and I do um, also payment plans as well, because I know it's hard and sometimes it's hard to just every, all the, everything mm. piles up. Bikini competitions are expensive. There's a lot going on. And, and so I want to make sure it works. So there's also payment plans and, and yeah, I mean, what else we can say about the bikinis? Well, I maybe a little bit of the colors that work or, I mean, yes. everybody knows, but um, the, I've been seeing a little bit of lighter fabrics, which I've been more excited about seeing more teal out there. Yeah, I've the been teal more seems turquoise, to be a little bit more up. turquoise, which is always going, it, it, it was more of um, an ethnic thing, right? So yeah. there's well darker complexion, like we can really pull those colors off. But now I've been seeing all kinds of skin, skin tones. Um, but again, they're doing teals and turquoise. They're still not going super light as a light blue, a gold, uh, you know, they're not going for silver, like things like that. Still, right. no, 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 those colors, because there's not enough contrast with your, with your body lines, right. And your skin, skin tone, but yeah, I'm still kind of more of a fan of the, a little bit of a darker tone. Mm -hmm. Royal blue is like amazing for me. I feel, I love Royal blue so much. Yeah. I love red. I love purple. I love green. I mean, I love them all really, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy just to see a little bit of different and seeing more teal out there. So it's been nice to see that. And there's so much you can do with the suit. Like there, you can like the crystal combinations, the connectors, mm -hmm. like you can make one color look different. Like you've, 
I mean, the suits that you've provided for me, like, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. You look at the I fabric. love the purple you oh, used. My oh, God, so it beautiful. was a different type of purple. It was like a softer purple. And yes. that one was also, I would say more like on the teal side, right? Which is a little bit softer the crystals, uh, color, yeah. but the crystals were like popping. Like it was so pretty. Yes. It was just one crystal color. So it's just to say, sometimes the girls be like, I want all these mixes. Okay, great. But your Celeste was just one crystal color and it was so pretty. It was so pretty. That one and the blue was my favorite, uh, favorite too. suits. Um, oh, I missed you. that blue. I'm so sad. One of the girls gave it to me and I just like, I, I think about, I think sometimes randomly it haunts me. Like I swear the suit is like floating around just like, hey, remember you, you forgot me somewhere. Like uh, it's heartbreaking. <laughs> I know. I love that suit, but you know, I like it served me so well and like I uh, always remember it but you know I could talk so much about your suits because I love them and they're so comfortable they make my body look so much better like I, I swear they're so they're just mostly it's the comfort for me and being able to stuff the top and then also seeing mm -hmm. that glute shape the, like everything yeah and you make it so easy and I want I would love if you could share what you think sets apart your approach to suit making and customizing mm -hmm. suits from other companies mm, just the perfect fit because I, I really think just that I really feel that my bikini top cuts are perfect they're like triangle to perfection and I know because I've done many patterns to achieve that so it is not too much side book but there's also not too little you know like it's just a great balance of like how much and how little you show um so also being able to kind of feed the competitors, right? Especially yeah. if I am going to the shows and I am there. I actually have done clients even the night before, clients that have not been on my team that I'm being able to adjust them right there because their measurements change so much. Um, it's I've never really have anybody telling me that I hate my suit. I like never, that's never happened. Never. Maybe it's been like, oh, I thought the suit was a little different the crystals because the crystals look so different when they are on stage right yes. when somebody sends me a screenshot of a stage picture or or with the lights from the window but then I know it's exact same it just looks different when you're on stage different right lighting, so yeah. maybe that but never I've always been like very very lucky with like people being really happy um so I think that the perfect feet, um, the, the shape on the glutes that I think I still, some brands still haven't achieved that. They still think that that vertical shape is better. And I know for a fact that the heart shape looks better and you can just tell, and it's kind of like what the pros are using, right? They're using the heart shape. What happens is a lot of the girls think because they are pros, they were in smaller cuts, but the amateur girls are also wearing those cuts. So sometimes because you're amateur, you think you have to cover more, but then the girl next to you is kind of uncovered and is beating you because it's showing the entire glute. Right. So really you've worked so hard for your body, show those, those glutes. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's some promoters that are a little bit um, picky with that and they'll require a little bit more coverage. It doesn't happen often. I think it's in a few states that that happens. I have another cut for those states, but it still has the same principles of that heart shape. Just, yeah. just a little bit more coverage. I still don't go in the vertical round because I'm just not really fun on when that, especially, you know, when the top part is completely straight. I just don't it's get it. It's completely to me, like, straight. It, it looks just doesn't like a, in haze. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to yeah, say I don't it, get but it, it looks either. like a jock strap a little bit from the back. I'm just like, what is that? It looks like a, like a diaper has been cut out. I don't know how to describe yeah. it. I'm just like, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know either. I'm trying physique. to understand that who put these bikinis on the map, you know, <laughs> but I know. And I think like, you know, I'll make sure like, you know, the girls are confident about ordering. Like I always tell all the nerves away because sometimes like they'll ask a lot of questions back to back and you'll see these threads that I have in the emails. Oh my God, it could be really long to mm -hmm. finally make a decision. And, but as soon as they know, they actually understand I've been doing this for too long and, and everything is going <laughs> to be okay. Because the worst thing that happens is that I make you another suit, right? Like the, let's say if you make a mistake and you make the wrong size, I make another suit. I make another top. Like, it's not like That's here, awesome. you, you got this suit. So now it's final, you know? Right. So I think they feel that confident during the apart. ordering. Yeah. Confident, feeling confident, you know, with the ordering process. Um, sometimes just know that some crystals may fall 
this is normal. Yeah. The crystals mine are heat press. I always heat press the very center of them. That's the way it looks cleaner. There's no glue around it. I know there's some brands that say like really take pride on gluing the bikinis by hand, but you know what, Celeste? There's so much glue around those crystals. I'm That's like, what I was no! curious about. Cause like you'll I get some haters, that. you know? Yeah, like, right. What do you, not, how do you address yeah. that? Like haters no, of like, like, oh, like, heat presses. Like, I why? do glue the entire trims, right? Because I like mm-hmm. to trim my bikinis are crystal to the edges completely yeah, i love that. and you know to the so edges there's no trim there's no one finger that you can put around that bikini and many other brands leave those trims out completely mm-hmm. they don't crystallize them so the center i like heat press a million times better because what happens is the bikinis uh, the crystals already come with glue on the back and when you put a heat heat press machine on top they just like merge into one it almost becomes a part of the fabric when you do it by hand they fall more I've you're barely putting had glue. crystals fall off. You're your suit. putting glue on, you know, on a crystal and then with tweezers, with a better type of tweezers, not like the ones you used to like hers, but with <laughs> special tweezers, you put it on the bikini and that cause there's a risk of like the crystals really, the glue in really spreading and mm. staining the suit. And also, if you put too much glue, it can get really hard. The fabric can get really, really hard looking. So I a million times like the look better. The crystals look a lot more smoother. And just more balanced because like you follow a pattern. So they are really perfectly aligned. And yeah. then of course the, the edges, I do two rows um, all around the bikinis by hand because usually bikinis have rubber behind them. And that rubber makes the heat press not really stick. Okay. So then the edges are done by hand. And when crystals fall in my suits, they're really always on the edges. So that makes me feel how many crystals are falling from other brands too, That's a good you point. know? So like, I think, and for girls, the crystals to fall is a big deal, even though um, the judges don't really see it. Even if there's a chunk of crystals missing, they don't really see it when you're on stage, but for you, it, it has a big impact. So um, always having a few extra crystals on those packages so the girls can just put a little bit of glue and replace those that may felt, maybe, but it really, you had a bunch of my suits and really never really happens. Literally never. So, and if it happens, it's like a couple that maybe and it was because just it was born right. for, yeah, or if forever it was and like washed and washed. Times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, Anyway, and yeah, it's like something serious, right? Ordering a bikini is like your last thing to get on stage yeah. and you want it to be perfect. So I think like if you get a suit and it's like really cutting your skin because it's super tight and it's not right on your measurement or, um, yeah, I think it's, that's why I think, and maybe that's what separates me that you can actually adjust it to your side and leave plenty of, um, string to be able to adjust it. And, and Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I've been doing this for so long. It's been, um, I started when there was like one other line out there. So I just never really, <clears throat> you know, took it to that next level because I kept it more internally for our clients and then some other people will just buy them too. But I haven't really made a big like thing out of it. I'm more focused on like the team and the posing yeah. and then the, the bikinis just sell because of those two, right? So yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. awesome that you have the rental suits now too, because people can get like a taste for mm-hmm. your bikinis yeah. and decide. Actually, if wanna... my rental right. at Center Podium this past weekend, Brianna, if you're watching this, I think he she hears your podcast. <laughs> um, she won first place and oh, yeah, gigant. Yeah. That was a really big show. She had one of my rentals. <clears throat> she was wearing a royal blue rental. And with two crystal combo, one row connector, and she won the show and she paid that $150. And that's now, awesome. What happens is like you can now, let's say she wants to rent another suit, she doesn't have to commit to one color. She can maybe rent the same one and still uh, spend less than buying a full suit, right? Right. Usually suits are around from $400 to $600. It could some brands go even higher I don't I don't really know why they go so high because I I really don't know but because you know like the cost of everything yeah yeah so then I don't know why they go to a thousands but um so if it's 400 to 600 dollars but then you can get a few like almost three suits for the price of one that you can Mm -hmm. wear and then you can kind of maybe see how you feel if you want to do this for the long run see how you feel in each color and then make a decision to invest on one that's also a great idea you yeah, know, like uh, you have to feel confident with that one color that you really want to stick with. I think it's good to try different things, but 
Um, usually there will be one color that will be more of your signature color than, you know, keep improving your body and just stick to that one color. Because if the bikini is good, you don't need to keep changing. It's most likely not the bikini problem. It is your body problem. I wouldn't say a problem. Your body still needing to improve. Right. So, yeah, I think it's not really the bikini, but you know, some girls want to like try Oh, new show, new bikini. Yeah, yeah. you're feeling like something else. And we have girls that have done like 10 suits by now. And <laughs> But I always like try like, no, save your money. Save your money. Just focus on your body. Your bikini looks amazing. Right. Um. Yeah, 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 yeah. And look, look at Carly. She's been wearing green since ever. I've coached Carly four years ago, right? This yeah. is one of our clients that is headed to nationals in green. And she's still with green today. And every show she does is in green. And I'm almost like, she's done so well in green. Do I really want to change it? Yeah. Just because you want to have a different vibe or different stage pictures. I'm like, is it really worth it when something really works with you? Right. You know, and also there's some clients that can do, do better with, they do great with different colors. And there's some that just one is really the one. Yeah. So maybe it just takes a little bit of time to find that one. I think, I think so too. Like what, what do you feel confident in what like looks best on, on you? And I love, I just think it's awesome that you added the rentals. I also think like your attention to detail and the personal experience that you bring to it is really important Mm -hmm. and definitely sets you apart from others. And I appreciate everything that you've talked to us about, not just from now the suits, but also posing like, oh my gosh, I feel like we just got a whole posing session in this and like a whole bikini breakdown, like everything. Wow. You need to know. I'm like, Celeste. Yeah. It is 741. I we're know. Filmed. We're so We said funny. we're going to do an hour and we're, we're two ridiculous. hours later. Wow. We lost track again. <laughs> I can't believe this happened again, Celeste. <laughs> I honestly, like, I feel like I, I, my brain knows it's going to happen, but I don't, I don't, I'm like, no, no, we got this. And then I'm like, we can just talk forever. <laughs> Oh, wow. I can't believe it. Well, we really touch a lot of important things about posting and I hope it helps others as well. Um, really feel more confident on stage because Absolutely. that really is the key. Yeah. Yeah. And if you could, would you share the Instagram maybe for pose like a pro and then yes, uh, your websites? Yeah. So post like a pro is exactly just that actually it's without the A, the Instagram handle is post like pro the post like a pro was taken, believe it or not. (laughs) So post like pro, you're going to see tons of posting videos there. And then some of my bikinis are featured there as well. Uh, For my bikini line, you can go to ingridomerobikinis.com. And actually the posting uh, package is also on that same website. And if you want to even make things easier, you just go to my Instagram, Ingrid Romero. And it's actually Ingrid Romero one. And you can see, you know, my website there that has all the links out and all the things, or you can DM me. But yeah, usually Ingrid Romero bikinis will have posing and bikinis, everything in there. IngridRomeroBikinis.com. Perfect. I will put that in the show notes page. I definitely linked that in the last ones too, but you guys, it's going to be right on these notes. So you'll be able to click it and go check everything out now. Um, And if you have any questions, like we'll always help you. I would hope that you guys tag us as you listen, you know, let us know some of the takeaways you had or what you're implementing after listening to this episode. All the notes are always on celestial.fit slash podcast. And it means so much to me when you guys share this with your teammates or your friends, or you tune in every week and just subscribe. It definitely goes a long way for the podcast and for everybody that I bring on. So appreciate you guys. And Ingrid, I appreciate you so much as always. I appreciate you. you too. I'm always so blessed and happy and grateful for you. Thank you so much. You are like, so Celeste, let me just say before we leave, she's like my go-to girl. Everything that I have to bend, she's my girl. And I'm sorry I do this to you, but sometimes if something's a little shocking, I will just leave a voice note like, okay, Celeste. I love so. It. Here's the drama of the day. And then she always just gives me the best advice. And honestly, you're so mature and and you. you give me the best advice and the way you just word things mean a lot to me, even the smaller things. So thank you so much for always being there as well. And I know Celeste, you are already gone so far, but I can't even imagine what the future is for you. Thank it's you. Like, wow. Thank you. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Thank you so much. I'm like back and I'm like, okay, my cheeks are all the way up to my ears. My (laughs) eyes are squinted. (laughs) I appreciate that. You know, you are so special to me and I'll wrap this episode up. You guys, just by letting you know that if you are curious about Ingrid's suits, her posing, even just the experience I've had, like I'm always 
you know, open to talking to you guys about it too, because I believe in everything she's doing and I want to make sure you guys have that same experience and feel comfortable with it. So reach out to us, you know, let's, let's make those connections happen so that you can Mm -hmm. feel really confident on stage. And with all that said, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, night or morning, wherever you are in the world while you're listening to this episode, just make it awesome. Yay, guys.